plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Welcome 2022. Love it. Good things are going to happen this year for you. If you're joining us online, welcome. We're glad to have you. And uh, what I want to do, though, is as we always do, is we begin the first uh, in January, the first uh, uh, Sunday service of the year. We like to have a, uh, a, a way to get information from you so that we can know more about how to connect with you. Uh, particularly if a difficult situation comes up in your life, that is the pastoral care card. So you have that in your, in, it, it, it was given to you, right? Everybody's got it. If you want to pull it out. What I'm asking you to do is to, if you're here, you're, hear, you're hearing my voice. If you're in the sound booth, if you're up in the command center, if you're on staff here, I want, I want every single person to do this card if you would. So just Take a moment. You're going now. If 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 I was you and somebody was asking me to fill this out, I, my first thought is, what are you going to do with it? You know, am I going to start getting stuff weekly and all? That is not at all what we're going to do. This is for our own personal information. You will rare. I mean, maybe twice a year, if that, uh, we'll use that. But we we guard that. If you honor me with this information, I will guard it like a pit bull. Okay. I mean, we. This is treasured stuff because life hands us curveballs and difficulties, and we want to be there for you. There, you know what really is one of the things that is the most one of the more challenging things as a pastor is when I find out somebody feels like they weren't pastored uh, in a way that they felt like they 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 needed or or, or deserved. Because th- my heart is that we are there for you that we, we were there through thick and thin, whatever's going on in your life. We not only want to pray for you, we want to be able to reach you, get a hold of you. That's why we do this. It doesn't mean you're joining the church, but I certainly would love to have everybody uh, fill that out. As you leave, they'll be collecting those. There's a place for you to just put those in, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll gather all that information. But it means, it means a whole lot to us, if, if, to me, if you would do that for me. Thank you for doing that. If you need a pen, of course, put your hand up and, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll help you with that. All right. Well, you look like you're doing it, so I'm going to give you a few more minutes, I mean, a few more seconds. I don't want to. This is important. Yeah, put, like if you look up or, or put it down, something to kind of let me know, and I'll move forward. All right. And if you're online, we have, a, a, we have that in a digital form for you to be able to do that. We'd love to have that information from you as well. Because that, I know some of you can't go to an in-person service at this time. We still, we still want to be able to pastor you as well. All right. Well, not only do we do this collection of information, but as important or maybe even more so, when we always launch our years with prayer. We believe prayer changes things. And we're talking about something bigger than just, you know, the sprinkling of the prayer over your food. You know, you've got, you know, some fast food and fries are glistening with salt and and grease and you kind of pray over it. And everybody around knows that prayer is not going anywhere, you know, you know. But you just do it, you know, throw it. Oh, Lord, just thank you for these fries and, you know, and whatever. We're talking about prayer that really is going to change things. And that is a, something that we grow in. It's not just automatic. We grow in it. And we want to do that together because we can do something together way more powerful than if just separated. So starting today. We're launching our 21 days of prayer and fasting. You say, why 21? Because that's a biblical term. That's Daniel fasted for 21 days, and you see this in the Bible. So three weeks, 21 days, where we're just going to do prayer, and you increase your level of prayer. So whatever you're currently doing, you increase it. If you go, well, that's, Andy. that's easy, Andy. I don't pray at all right now. Well, 
then you got it easy, right? All you have to do is just pray for a few seconds, and you've more than doubled your time. Uh, but we want to pray together. We want to come together and pray. Use this time to believe that God's going to do stuff in our own lives as well as in our church. But it's not just most people kind of get the prayer part, 21 days of prayer and fasting. The fasting part is sometimes tough. So many of us struggle with that. We hear that. We think austerity. We think uh, there's no fun, no joy in that. But really, it's to dislodge something so that you can get something else. And so fasting is an important part of what we do. So people fast all kinds of things. They fast. I've been listening, talking to people today. I've been texting people, what are you fasting? Some people said fa social media. Another person said TV. Somebody said sugar. Somebody said alcohol. Somebody said caffeine. Woo, that's a tough one, huh? All kinds of stuff. So you choose something that would help you. Like, hey, this is something I could probably do without. Let me give you some ideas, okay, if you're wondering. One idea is, is let, if you've got, you know, like a, a, a colorful language, you know, when you, especially if somebody cuts you off and some amazing words come out of your mouth, I want to give you for 21 days some options. Okay, this is alternative cuss words, okay? Just for 21 days. Just, just think about it, okay? Think about it. Shucks, you know, uh, rats, gosh, sh shizzle. Here's one, crapola. Okay, that's on the edge, but for 21 days you are blessed. Crapola is, is a sanctified word. Uh, Flipping, here's good gravy. I don't, you won't be hearing me say good gravy. Jack wagon, crud muffin. Here's shut your pie hole. Maybe, maybe you're already saying that, right? <laughs> Judas priest, kiss my grits. Anyways, some great ideas. So this, this might be your fast. You know, some people do food fasts, and, uh, and sometimes that can help you. I came across a video of a girl, and she decides to fast. At, she tastes mustard, and then she decides that she's going to fast the mustard after this. I saw it on, the, uh, on uh, YouTube. You might have seen this. Watch this video. Little girl, she's offered mustard, hot mustard, for the first time. And she processes it and decides maybe it's better to fast. Watch. You want to try wasabi? No. Do you want to try it? No. Okay. Wasabi. Do you want to try it? Smell it. Smell it first. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> so may, maybe you have a wasabi in your life that you could use you could use some fasting from, you could use some help. Well, that's why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. We want to fast something and uh and and put that aside for 21 days and then move towards God. You see, fasting helps us separate ourselves from the world. And prayer helps us to draw close to God. Together, that's where the power comes in. And some of you need God's power in your life. Some of you need to know God's going to come and do some kind of huge breakthrough in your health, in your relationships, in your job, something going on in your dream life or uh, something, you know, your, your, your desires. God is, wants to be part of that. So we want God at the front end as we kind of, okay, as we go into 2022, God, you're invited to be part of this. Now, the challenge with, with the future is that nobody knows what the future holds. That's part of the reason it causes us anxiety. That's part of the reason it causes us fear. Now, fear can be the very thing that holds us back from achieving what God has for us. We get all af afraid. We get all concerned. And then we're just kind of treading water, trying. To, we're in a survival mode day by day. We don't want to make any plans because of the fear of the unknown. But God, and, and really, that's something that all of us share. says, since no man knows the future, who can, tell him, uh, who can tell him what is to come? God can. Nobody else can. This is something God, God alone knows the future. And that's good news. 
if you know the Lord. If you know the Lord and he's, you know that he's caring for you and he's watching over you, that's good news. That's news the world doesn't have. They live in the anxiety. They live in the fear. We don't have to. Now, there's some mistakes we can make when it comes to going forward and God, for God's plan for our future. Let's look at those. Things we want to avoid, three mistakes to avoid. First of all is, is planning without God. Planning is good. Setting goals, good. This is a good time to do it. You set down. Some of you have never made a goal ever. Or maybe you've made goals but never for your personal life. I want to encourage you, to challenge you. Do that. You know, write them down. Something powerful that happens when you write them down and you look at them and you you dream big. Believe that God's going to do something. But you want to make sure and include God in the process. Sometimes I know people that love the Lord. No doubt about it. They love the Lord. But when it comes to goal setting, they, they act like atheists. God's not even part of it. Look at what James talks about. He says, now listen, you who say, today or tomorrow we are we, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. So he has a whole bunch of stuff in here that's helpful. I mean, he says what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, when they're going to do it. This is a good business plan. What's missing? Well, the problem is not once does he mention God. Nowhere is God part of this. And God needs to be part of our plans. When we're making plans, which is good, which is important, We need to make sure in our business, in our education, in our recreation, in our relationships, that God's part of that. Instead, James says, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. If. Life is spelt L-I-F-E. If is in the center. We have ifs. We don't know what's going to happen. And so we bring God into it. Not in a predetermined fate type of thing, but just God's going to be part of this. He's part of what's happening. Again, that's why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. We want to go into into 2022, and we're we're ready. There's something powerful when you begin your day with prayer. You don't even know what's going to happen. But when you begin your day with prayer and some Bible reading, that prepares you for the things you don't even know are going to happen in your life. So your homework assignment is that you make some plans And you include God in it. Well, there's uh, the second is presuming about tomorrow. That's another mistake is when we presume on tomorrow. Here's what the Bible says about the James again. He says, why? You don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist. We'll look at that in a second. That appears for a little while and then vanishes. And it is you and it is you boast and brag. All, All such boasting is evil. So he says, there's no guarantee. We, we, and presuming on the future is a mistake. Don't presume about tomorrow. Why? Well, life is unpredictable. We just don't know. I mean, with all of the economic stuff that's been going on that's connected to decisions that the politicians are making and COVID and all that, you know, the Fed chair, Jerome Powell, talked about transitory inflation. I don't know if you remember that. That was a few months back. Oh, yeah, transitory. Well, n- lately they've been walking it back. I heard an interview a couple weeks ago by Jerome Powell. He was going, yeah, I'm very humbled because I, I realize I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, I mean, and, and listen, nobody knows. Everybody's got their theory, and their, but in the end, we don't really know. But again, God knows, and God can prepare you in advance. God can, and he wants to prepare you in advance. You're not left out on your own, and regardless of, whether it's your finances or your, um, your career, your relationships, your health, whatever it is. Now, the truth is we're on a need-to-know basis, though. God can't, he's not going to show us the whole year. For, some, for many of us, if we saw the whole year and all the challenges that would come, it would be overwhelming. Here's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I have much to say to you. He's talking to his disciples. More than you can bear. <laughs> you know what? The truth is most of us, we can't bear a whole lot. We're just kind of like, I need it in bite sizes, you know. Little, how about 24-hour segments? That'll be plenty for me. And Jesus talked about that, right? Jesus talked about, you know, that don't worry about tomorrow. Today has enough problems 
of its own. But also, life is brief. Life is brief. That's the mist thing I said. I'd come back to that. You are a mist that appears for a little while. Kind of like a, a fog. You know, Virginia Beach has had some fog, fog outs the last couple of weeks. I mean, more fog than I can remember in a long time. But the nature of fog is that it's there, and then it just kind of, you know, disappears after a while, right? If you're older and you remember uh, the single-pane windows in our homes, you know, that, and it'd be cold outside, and you kind of blow on it, and it fogs up. Then you can make little, you can draw all over it and tell your parents catch you, and then they yell at you. And well, this is the idea, that compared to eternity, even if you live 70, 80, 90 years, compared to eternity, that's a mist. That's small. We go from Hot Wheels to a wheelchair. <laughs> Faster than we realize. Diapers all the way to, you know, to decay, you know. Don't boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what a day may bring forth. Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, he says, give us this day or what, annual bread our monthly bread? No, he says our daily bread, right? Small increments, small increments. Putting off doing what's doing, doing right. In other words, this is procrastination. This is a big problem because it destroys our life. You see, it starts out, oh, I'll get around to it, but then we don't. And it just keeps going and we keep pushing it down, keeps pushing, and next thing you know, it brings... Sorrow, it's, you know, I'll change, you know, I'll change tomorrow. I'll change some at some point. Anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. So often we think of a sin as something that we do, we commit. You know, I, if I steal something, that's a sin. If I lie, that's a sin. I'm doing something. But what the Bible says is that if you know what to do and you don't do it, that's sin too. In fact, there might, we might often sin in this area more than we do what we commit by what we omit, what we don't do. Someday becomes no day. A number of years ago, I was having some pretty significant health issues. And, uh, you know, when I did some soul searching, I realized, you know, I just procrastinated not just years, decades. I just was, I wasn't taking care of myself. I wasn't eating good. I wasn't exercising, I was drinking too much coffee, on and on and on. And I always had an excuse. I mean, in college it was, oh yeah, when I'm, when, you know, at, when graduate school's over. You know, and then when I got married and then, you know, the, we had little kids. We had three in diapers at one point, you know. When the kids get older, then I can, you know, you know. At one point I had two jobs, you know, when, when, I, when I only have one job, when the church was, Small, because Sharon and I started this church. Oh, when the church grows up and becomes more stable, then, well, you know what? It just kept, it kept being someday, someday. So my body starts breaking down when I started praying. I felt like the Lord said, when, I never told you to ignore your body. I never told you to live like that. You know, that was your choice. So part of receiving an answered prayer was to change the way I was living. Not looking for magic to happen, but God wants me to steward my life. So I made, started making some changes. So when we know we're supposed to do something and we don't, that's wrong. And so God wants us to change those things. Procrastination keeps us stuck where we're at. It says we can be sure if we know Christ, if, that we know Christ, if we obey his commands. The one who says, I know him, but doesn't do what he commands. And he's coming out pretty harsh here, but he goes, he's a liar. He goes, hey, that's, just, that's a problem. When you know what you need to do, God says love you know, one another. Love your neighbor. Love yourself. Give the first part of your day to God. Seek first the kingdom of God. Over and over, God says that we need to make sure and we're, and we're, and we're living the life that God wants us to live. The one who says, I know him, but doesn't do what he commands, is a liar. Same type of thing. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Oh, yeah, someday I'll do it. And then we tend to pick and choose, right? Oh, but I'm doing that. Yeah, but you're not doing this. And that's what God has his finger on. Well, none of us are perfect, right? We're all in progress. We're all working on stuff. That's why the Holy Spirit will highlight something and say, this is what I want you to work on. A lot of times that comes out when we're fasting and praying. 
which is why the enemy fights that so much. You think Satan wants you to be fasting and wants us to be fasting and praying together? The power of corporate fasting and prayer? No, something huge happens. But what will happen is the Holy Spirit will come alongside you and say, this is it. Do it now. 2022, this is your year. Do it now. Restore that relationship. Offer forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. Commit your life to Christ. Be baptized. Find a church home. Get plugged in. Take growth track. Start tithing. On and on, God's saying, I want you to do things. And you need to be doing these things. No more procrastinating. And so we can, let's, we'll do that together. So as we approach the future together, let me give you three things that will, hate, that will help you to face your future. Because sometimes God gives us an impossible assignment. Joshua certainly had that. Now the Bible says we can learn from these people that have lived before us, like Joshua. Joshua was uh, with Moses. He was Moses' assi- assistant as they were being uh, led out of Egypt. But Joshua had the unique job of bringing the people of God into the promised land. Into the promised land. Deuteronomy 7 tells us that that it wasn't going to be easy. There were seven nations, hostile, bigger, badder, meaner. And uh, and he had to do this by faith. It says, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go, then you will be then prosperous and successful. So he, he actually uses this word successful twice, saying, hey, when you approach something new, you have a big assignment, maybe an impossible assignment. How are you going to be successful? Well, to do what Joshua did. First of all, we need to be confident in our dream. There was a dream that Joshua had. His dream, he was in Egypt, in slavery. His dream was that the people, God's people would be freed from slavery. But not only that, that they would go and enter into the promised land that had been promised to them for 400 years. And so that was his dream. Now, as he lived out his dream, curveballs came his way. And they always come. They always come. If it's not a virus, it's an economy issue, it's a resource issue, it's all kinds of stuff. And you need a dream, just like Joshua had it. All of us need to have a dream. But curveballs will come, things that will try to uh, get us off track. He had, he had the Red Sea. <laughs> they had to get through the Red Sea. They had Mount Horeb and how they camped there for a while and got the Ten Commandments. He ended up wandering the desert, that whole detour there. There's a lot that went into uh, the accomplishment of this dream. But what's interesting is as he gets closer to the dream, God gives him more specifics. And the more specific we can have to our dream, the better. He says, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses is aid. Moses is servant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them. To the Israelites, I will give you every place where you set your feet, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. So he gets very specific here, very precise. And when we're pursuing a dream, an assignment that God gives us, pers- it helps to be specific as, we, as we're prayerful about it, as God reveals more things to you. Now, some of you are unclear about your dream. You don't even know what it is. You're kind of existing. And let me say, God has a dream for you. Now, sometimes you have to clear stuff out of the way. Again, why 21 days of prayer and fasting is so helpful. And may, maybe it's, just, it's just, just removing TV alone would be enough so that God could start speaking into your life. But it might be something else. That's also why we do growth track. Now, step one is right after today's service. If you've not taken growth track, growth track is where we help you to identify your dream that God has placed in your heart. And then we want to help, we want to help come alongside and be part of that dream. So we invite you to come and be part of growth track. We do that every month because it's important. It's an important part 
of what we, what God's called this church to do is to help you discover the purpose God has for you, to discover the dream and start walking that out. But it's, you know, while God has a dream for you, he also has a dream for us. It's a, a church has a dream, an empowered church that changes the fabric of society where it's placed and the reach that we have through online. That's one of the reasons why prayer, part of 21 days of prayer and fasting on Saturday mornings, we gather here for corporate prayer. Three Saturdays, starting this coming Saturday, nine in the morning, right here. And you go, well, and, and it's an hour. Now, that might be intimidating for some of you. An hour? I would not have, what do I do for an hour? Well, listen, uh, we, <laughs> it's, the pressure's not on you. We will, we're going to have, we'll have a couple, we'll have like a worship song or two. We'll have, uh, we'll give you some things you can pray about. We actually have a little book that will help you to show you how to pray. If you're not sure how to do that, some New Testament prayer. And then we pray corporately. We're uh, one of the leaders of our church will stand and pray and we're all kind of in agreement with that. But there's something powerful that happens when we do that together. Because God has a plan for your life. And so you need prayer, but God has a plan for this church, this family, this in this moment, this generation. And how do we achieve that? Well, that's why we come together and we pray together. So I invite you to come, at least to one of them, preferably to all three. I'd love to have you there, here, right here in this auditorium. Of course, it'll be online if you're going to join us online as well. But we, we, we need you to pray with us. We want you to be part of us. We invite you to be part of that. One of the challenges when you start pursuing a dream is Satan starts to try to chip away at it. Say, well, what if you didn't really hear God? What if God's really not going to come through? You know, what if that's really not God's will after all anyways? And this seems to be part of Joshua's problem because God had to speak to him four different times and say, be strong and courageous. Don't let fear steal your dream because that was what was happening to Joshua. Secondly is be committed to your decisions. When you make a decision, when you choose not to procrastinate anymore, and you go, today's the day, I'm going to make a decision, then you're committed to it. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So he's talking about persistence, sticking in, hanging in there. Don't give, you just don't give up. And you don't let excuses derail you either and you don't let critics derail you you know you got to outlast your critics in fact if you don't have any critics then your dream is probably too small because when you get a big enough dream you're going to have people that are small-minded thinkers that will start to take pop shots at it and tell you why it can't happen or why it's foolish or on and on and on there's plenty of people out there like that and so part of achieving your dream is outlasting your critics. Joshua was no exception. Joshua told the people, key word here, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. They're on the brink of the Jordan River. So they've gone through the Red Sea. They came out of the grip of Pharaoh and slavery in Egypt, went through the Red Sea, did their desert detour, here, they're at the brink of going into the promised land. Something totally new God has for them. And God's word is, this is a special day. Whenever you're about to step out in faith, trusting God to do something in your life, that is a significant moment. You go, isn't it the day I actually take the step? No, it's the day before you take the step. That's the day you consecrate. We go, what's that mean? Well, it means you set that apart. You kind of, you, you give it to God and say, God, you do something. I need you to come through. And you kind of just set that out and say, God, this is for you. You do something significant. Well, that's why we're doing 21 days of prayer and fasting. So that, that this is our time to say, God, you, we're con that's what we're doing is we're consecrating 2022. Saying, God, I want to trust you for something big in my life. So to get to, we're going to do that. 2022. Some of you are going, I, you, maybe you're thinking, I still don't know what I'm going to fast yet. Choose something. 
You can switch it later. I, I don't care. Just don't let this moment go because of procrastination where you go, I can't decide, I can't decide. Well, decide something. You go, I need help. Then fast caffeine. You go, well, I need more help because that ain't happening. <laughs> Choose something. But you make a commitment to that decision. And then three, it says, be conscious of God's dependability. God will be there. Just like Joshua had to trust, God's going to be there in that moment. We're going to walk across the Jordan, which was at flood stage, by the way. God had to actually help them get across the river, much less get into the promised land. And then follow God's promises. Look at the promises that God gives Joshua. God gave Moses. God gives Paul. I mean, these are promises that apply to us. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life as it was with Moses, so I will be with you. He's talking about one plus God as a majority. I mean, God's going to be there for you. You can't decide for other people. Everybody makes their own choice. But you can decide for you. You can decide today is the day I am going to follow God. I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to embrace the promises He has for me. He says, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Sometimes other people can open doors for you, but you still have to walk through it. And God says, I'm going to, I'm going to be there with you as you walk through that door. In fact, God says He opens doors that nobody else can, can close. So God says, I'm going to be there with you. Now, what is that? Every promise has a premise. There's a condition associated with it. That's why, that's why not everybody experiences this. Well, what's the condition? Well, the condition, he told Joshua earlier, he said, obey everything that I have for you. Everything. See, our tendency is to pick and choose. Well, I'll do that, but not this. I have, I have you know, I have a... Two scoops of that. Ooh, I don't like that. No, everything. doesn't mean we're perfect, but we begin a journey that when the Holy Spirit starts to point stuff out in our lives, our answer is, God, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I'll walk with you. You help me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move closer to you in that. You don't want to get to the end of your days. That's why it's, I think it's good when we take a moment at the beginning of a year or the you know, whenever we move decades, to evaluate for the inevitable, which is when we die. When we get to our deathbed or we get, you know, older, so many people have regrets. I've talked to many people. I've talked to them on the deathbed. I've talked to people in, 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 in older life. So many people have regrets. You don't have to be that way. It, can, it, it doesn't have to be that way for you. But it would mean that you would start to plan now and live now with the end in mind. Here's some famous quotes of people that had regrets at the end of their life. Sixth president of the United States. My life has been spent in vain with idle aspirations. Well, that's kind of sad, right? Or Hugo Gracias, uh, the uh, father of, of international management, said, I've accomplished nothing worthwhile with my life. That's sad. And Robert Louis Stevenson said, Here lies one who meant well, tried a little, and failed much. Listen, you can choose today, hey, I want to live a life that's significant. That a life that is, is, life is not all about solving the problems we have today. It's about having a reason to live that's bigger than the problems we're in. Now, there's a, a verse in the Bible that that is inspirational to me. It's kind of a verse, if you've read the Bible, if you've read the New Testament, you, you've probably read it. It, it. Maybe you caught this, maybe you didn't. But for me, when I read it, I thought, wow, that's, that's really interesting. What it is, is it's, uh, it's the New Testament. Peter is out sh preaching the gospel. And this, this, this lady, her name is Dorcas, uh, she dies. Her name means gazelle, and she dies. And the community that she's in wants... They want a miracle. They want her to live again, to be raised from the dead. And so they, they appeal to Peter. Hey, this is why she deserves to live again. And when I read that, I thought, you know, that's interesting. 
if it was me, you know, if I was dead and people were appealing for me to be raised and get given a few more weeks or, or years, what would you say about me? Or for you, why do you deserve, if you were to die today, why would you deserve to, to be raised from the dead? In other words, why do you deserve to live another day? So here's the story real quick, and then we'll close. In the city of Joppa, there was a woman named Dorcas, means gazelle, a believer who was always doing kind things for others, especially for the poor who had died. So you see the first two things she did. She did three. First is she served others. It was, she didn't live for herself. She served others. Two is she was, she was generous. She thought about other people that were in a more difficult place in their life. And then, so she dies. As soon as Peter arrived, they took him upstairs where Dorcas lay. The room was filled with weeping widows who were showing one another the coats and other garments Dorcas had made for them. So she's industrious. She served others. She was generous. She was industrious. I think all three are important. I think, I mean, why do we deserve to, to keep going? Who said we, you know, we're owed anything? But I love that story because it kind of reveals something about, you know, how we live in our life. Are we living our life so that, you know, we're impacting other people? Because there's a, the temptation is to be all about us. But God, his word is, it's not about you. It's not about you. It, and the kingdom, the way the kingdom works is, is when we put God first, all the things that we're secretly de and desperately in wanting comes back. God blesses us that way. That's just the kingdom, the kingdom math. That's the way that works. And so here we are, beginning, right in the beginning here, 2022. Let's take this moment and consecrate this year. Let's do that. Would you pray with me? Close your eyes if you would. Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I invite you right now. Come, Lord. Lord, I pray for those who struggle with fear and anxiety. Maybe you already have a tendency, a propensity towards that. And that's kind of gone into overdrive these last several months and years. And here you're looking at a year. And so it's hard to plan goals, have dreams. And so, God, I pray that you break through that, that, that Lord, you help them to see that you're going to stand with them. You'll be there with them. Would you say, God, give me a big dream? Give me clear direction. Regardless of past mistakes, whatever your past holds, God says, it's where your feet are headed. What you're going to do today, that's what consecration means. You're looking forward, not back. Would you say, God, give me faith for the future? Help me to trust you that your plans for me are good and that your pathway for joy and happiness is the right way. Some of you need a fresh start, a new beginning as we go into this new year. Don't go into this new year with a bunch of baggage from the past. You can have a fresh start right now. God offers that. That's why Jesus Christ came. That's why he lived on this earth, a perfect life. And then he was hung on that cross for our sins. He paid the price so we didn't have to keep living that out over and over mentally, emotionally. Today can be your day. If you're saying, Andy, I'm ready for that. I want, I want that new beginning. Then I'm going to ask you to pray with me right where you're at. I'll lead you in prayer. I'll just lead you in prayer so you can have that new beginning. This isn't about joining our church. I'm not going to have you come forward or stand up, but what I want you to do is to let me know, Andy, I want to pray with you. Lead me in that prayer. I'll be following you, and just let me know by just lifting your hand up right where you're at. Would you do that? Okay. Who else? Yep. 
There's still time. Put your hand. Say, I'm, I need that fresh to start, that new beginning. I see you over there in the back. Yep, in the back. Okay. There's a lot of you. Put your hand down if you would. Follow me in this prayer. Say, dear God, today, I need your help. I don't want to procrastinate any longer. And it begins right now. You say, God, I receive your forgiveness and the power you offer for those who follow you. Would you say, God, give me a fresh start? Help me to know how much you love me and discover that. Help me to walk free. You say, God, I want this year to be a year of freedom for me. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, would you congratulate those people who prayed? And it's an incredible decision. I know God's going to do some amazing things in your life. He does not disappoint. I would love to be part of that. If you're visiting with us or you're new, why don't you consider praying about being part of what we're doing here at the Vineyard? We'd love to have you. you can, your next step is going to Growth Track. Step one is right after this service, as I said earlier. Well, if you'd like to contribute financially to what we're doing here at Vineyard, there's some ways that you can do that up on the screen where it, uh, you can text it. You can uh, go to our website. Many of you give digitally. Most of you guys give digitally, and you do it at a time other than this. But I still like to use this uh, moment here at the beginning uh, of, the, of the month to just pray over you because I trust that God wants to bless your finances. I, I believe that. So would you stand with me? Let me pray over you, and then we'll close in a song. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are the, the, the source of everything we need. Lord, help us. Lord, I pray the floodgates of heaven open up over every person who is listening. Lord, give them so much blessing they can't even handle it. Lord, I ask that you prevent the pests from trying to devour anything. Lord, I pray that their influence would reach out to our community and, in fact, hit all nations. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's